Welcome folks, this is Mac T, and this is the start of my Mac T Garage Series on oil testing. I will be following up after this video with a series of videos concerning virgin oil testing, primarily on 5W20 synthetic oils. I have approximately 16 tests that I have done, and at too much uh, expense and time and effort to get this done to cover the oils that everybody uses in their vehicle as far as their Ford Edge, the 3.5 and 3.7 and any other engine that you may run across that uses a 5W20 engine oil. I will cover first of all the oil series intro and what this is is when you receive your oil test from a lab there's a lot of different names and, and things covered, such as metals, what kind of metals you have in your oil. And then, of course, it covers uh, different additives and then some properties that are tested. Now, my effort in this is going to be covering the oil test to give definitions of what you are seeing in your oil report so that you, the viewer, can be educated in what this means to you as far as the oil test results go. So I'm going to be covering this in a series and it will be found in Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook. The PDF of this document that I'm going off of will be in there for your viewing and study. I am providing this free of charge to everybody and of course I'm making this video on YouTube so like and subscribe to this YouTube channel to follow on what is going on in the oil testing series. But again, this is the start of the series, and we're going to cover what these properties, cleaners, and of course metals are that are reported in your oil test results from any lab that you may be having your oil testing performed at. And in this case, my chosen lab is Blackstone Labs, and I will go again cover what this report covers and what you can expect. Now, one thing you do need to know is that as far as oils go, 15% of your lost energy is due to friction. Now, oil companies tend to want to try to reduce this friction, as with the engineers of the various motor companies uh, that manufacture vehicles. They want less friction because they want more power. And when you have less friction, you have more power which is also why you want to take and make sure that you have a good oil in your engine. Now, the main function of the lubricant, of course, is to cause a slippery surface between the two metals that are moving, such as your pistons and the cylinder wall. If there is a slippery surface there, the lubrication will cause less friction. Now, this is the real goal of engine oil try to prevent that loss of friction and also to cause a sealing of the cylinder to not permit any type of combustion to of course leak down and then of course that gives you more power in the process too. Now most additives are in the nanoparticle category. Yes, that means you need a very very strong <laughs> microscope to see these things and of course the more that you, the smaller they are, the better they can work to get in between those imperfections of your cylinder and your piston in order to, of course, reduce that friction as they become that lubrication property that you're looking for. And thus, you have less wear and you have more power. Now, once you get that taken care of, uh, the size and the shape of the particles varies. There are some flat, or as we call, uh, flaking type additives, then you have some beading type additives. The shape of them is not necessarily important as to the function, but it just depends on the process and the milling and what size they get them down to and how they actually look under a microscope ultimately in the end. And of course we will find out as we go through this, not all additives are equal in how they look and how they react. Now oil testing I will say is a benefit because most people change your oil too early approximately 40 percent of you 
and then 40% of you change your oil too late. Only 20% of the people who own vehicles change the oil on time. Now, how do you know it's on time? Lab testing will tell you when it's on time, and that's an important factor in all of this. That's why I do lab testing. I have literally spent nearly a thousand dollars in lab test fees over the few years that I've been doing this in order to generate information for what I'm doing with my Ford Edge. And you can do this on your Chevys, GMCs, any other vehicle that you're using, even your lawnmower. You can tell what condition your engine is in by doing lab testing. And that will help you determine, oh, could I have gone longer or should I have changed it earlier? And the lab test will help you determine what status your oil is at so you don't change it too early because that's expensive. And of course, changing it too late can cause mechanical defects. And, but change it on time means you save money. Now, some of the items you're going to be seeing in your lab test that I'm going to be covering are your aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, tin, molybdenum, nickel, manganese, silver, titanium, potassium, boron, silicon, sodium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, and barium. Those are the ones I'm primarily going to be covering here because those are the ones on the lab test. Some are metals, some are additives, and others are cleaners or neutralizers. Now, when you add any type of product to your engine oil, of course, metals are an issue. If you have high metals in trace amounts that get through the filter, it is important to know what these metals are. So here's what the deal is on, on your, your metals when you're working with this. And in just strict layman's terms, uh, your filter might be going down to you know so many microns. Well, anything that is smaller than those registered microns on your oil filter uh, can get into the oil, and it goes right through the filter. And then it gets in between your piston and your cylinder wall. And what happens is it can cause microscopic wear because that metal then is metal on metal and it can cause scratches and of course ultimately cause damage to your engine, your bearings and everything else. So these metal counts that you see in your testing have a significant measurement as far as the condition of your engine to tell you what wear is occurring. So again, oil frequency and good filters are very important to decrease the wear on your engine. One of the top metals you're going to be finding, of course, is aluminum. Aluminum it can be found in your engine blocks. A lot of engine blocks are being made of aluminum, pistons, blowers, oil pump bushings, and bearings and some cam bushings and oil coolers. All will have trace amounts of aluminum in them as wear occurs. Now you want to make sure that this wear is, of course, not high and make sure you pay attention to this on your oil report. Nickel. Nickel is another metal that you'll find in there, and that could be in your valves, your crankshafts, camshafts, bearings and shafts, and then of course is not a very common metal found in engines, but it can be found in transmission, hydraulic systems, and gear systems. Nonetheless, you want to pay attention to how much nickel you have in your report. Chromium. Chromium is what your engine piston rings will contain. And that is important to know that because you also will have liners for your cylinders, exhaust valves, and zinc chromate from cooling system inhibitors, rolling element bearings, and then of course any coated elements and rollers, taper gears and bearings, along with some shaft coatings and special gears that are chrome plated. So chromium is part of your metals that could be in your engine. And if you see a excessive wears on that, they will notify you that in that oil report from the lab that you had the test done. Now iron is one of the most common ones you're going to find because a lot of your other parts are made of iron and of course it is a very common wear metal and you will have cylinder liners that may be of iron, piston rings, valve trains, uh, crankshaft and rocker arms, some uh, spring gears and lock washers, nuts, pins, connecting rods, engine blocks, if it's an older engine, and of course your oil pump, 
aircraft and bearings and any other type of raceways or cages that you may have within the engine and of course journal bearings but keep in mind that all this iron is not good if it starts getting high some engines will just will uh, demonstrate a higher iron wear uh, than other engines so just keeping that keeping that in mind will of course help you understand that uh, maybe that's normal maybe it isn't I do know for sure that certain engines do have a higher iron wear rate than other engines so uh, just go by what the universal averages are copper copper is used in your valve train of course wrist pin bushings cam bushings oil coolers and cores thrust washers governor connecting rods bearings valve gear and thrush bearings rolling element bearings and everything else that you have within your engine could have some sort of copper in it so you want to make sure that whatever you do you pay attention to that wear metal of copper in your report also and if there is heavy copper again your oil report folks will tell you that you have abnormal wear compared to universal averages lead lead is not a real common metal additive because lead tends to soften metals but there may be uses for it and some of those uses are in your gasoline yes if you are running a leaded gasoline because you have an older vehicle that would stand a reason because some would seep down into your oil but uh, primarily you're not going to find a lot of lead in your engines for these new uh, up-to-date engines they just don't use lead too much in the metal anymore but there are cases where you could find it for certain reasons tin your valve train bushings wrist pin bushings and cam bushings and oil cooler cores and everything could have tin they, if they're made in such a manner that they solder them you're gonna have leaching of tin in there along with any bearings or connecting rods that may have that in there uh, that will cause any tin so if you do see tin that again that is a wear metal to be aware of and of course I have never seen a tin level in any oil test I'm doing it might be in some older engines but not necessarily found in today's modern engines manganese yes that's a mouthful but anyway it is used in certain steel alloys and virtually no other uses or applications so it would be an alloy of sort that you would find involved in this as far as a manganese. Again, I do not see much manganese in my oil reports. Usually it's zero. So this is not necessarily a metal that you would find in the newer uh, up-to-date uh, modern engine. Silver? Well, there can be some silver involved in your valves and valve guides, cylinder liners and bearings. But also make sure that you do check roller uh, element bearings and then of course it will be an alloy in any type of races that are within the engine. But again, uh, not a real popular uh, metal because of the cost and expense, but it might be an alloy that is used within the engine and you be aware of that. Again, not much that I've seen as far as silverware in the metal content. Now, now the additives okay the additives uh, what I'm gonna tell you is titanium is an additive it is not a wear metal per se but it is an additive now there are a lot of what they call powdered and liquid metal additives that are placed within the oils and this is one of the newest ones that they're going to and titanium basically it chemically bonds to the metal structure of the engine surface uh, it forms what we call an oxide, a hard oxide called iron titanate. Okay, iron iron titanate, of course, is an anti-wear additive. What it does is it gets between those metal surfaces that are moving, and it forms a bond, and of course reduces friction. And under heavy pressures, it allows everything to move better. Now, one reason titanium is becoming a new additive because not all oils have titanium. Titanium is essentially being experimented as a form of uh, substitute for zinc or otherwise known as ZDDP and I will talk about that once we get to that point. Molybdenum. Yes, that is a mouthful and a lot of people have a hard time 
uh, pronouncing it, but that is what we call it. Otherwise, most people call it Molly B or Molly. Uh, but it is also a liquid anti-wear additive. And of course, uh, it's an alloy in bearing rings and of course, piston rings. And it is a platelet, okay? Remember I told you, not everything's round. This one is a platelet. In other words, it's flat and roundish. Uh, and it uh, is attracted to your metal surfaces, imperfections in the cylinder walls to fill them up and of course make things move smoother. Uh, it does need a thermochemical reaction. In other words, it needs heat and reaction in order to form that bond. And our engines generate heat. So thus this uh, Molly B, as we say, will bond and of course affix itself to the cylinder walls and pistons and other moving parts, bearings, and of course give you some uh, lubrication. And this is also known as a lubricity modifier. Okay, sulfur. It is an extreme pressure additive found along with phosphorus. Okay, pressure agents like this bond to the metal surfaces and keep them from touching at high extreme pressures. So sulfur is an additive, although I don't see a lot of sulfur being used, but it is an additive under the phosphorus category. Boron. A lot of folks use boron and not a lot of folks use boron. It just depends on the, on the uh, manufacturer of the oil, how much boron they use. But it again is an extreme pressure additive. And it's usually found in coolants, but it's also found in oils. So that really plays a part in how you view your test. And of course the lab will tell you what the problem is based on other testing they do on that but it does form a friction boundary layer in the lubricant and it works synergistically with other lubricants. In other words, uh, synergistic uh, is essentially not, not one plus one equals two, but one plus one equals three. Uh, so in other words, it enhances and more than doubles the, the effect of certain other chemicals and additives in there. So it's a good chemical. It helps things work even better, but it uh, isn't insoluble and it is a powder. So boron can be noted, as you will see in my future oil test, as a trace solid. Sometimes uh, the boron settles out of suspension and will be noticed as a trace insoluble that is in the, a, the lab test. And of course you will see that in some of my future tests. Phosphorus, usually found in anti-wear oils or in gears in hydraulics as well as in diesel and gasoline motor oils. Uh, it's an anti-wear antioxidant. Antioxidant is important. Additives always want to take your oil from an acidic nature to an alkaline nature because alkaline is better. And of course it acts as a film to surround metal parts helping keep them separated. Now we're on to our zinc, otherwise known as ZDDP. Okay, it's found in anti-wear oils and gears forever. They've been using zinc a lot of places. Now, some oils utilize a lot of zinc, but the problem with zinc is catalytic converters. Catalytic converters do not like uh, zinc. Zinc damages catalytic converters. And if you remember, I talked about the titanium replacing zinc. Well, the titanium does not damage catalytic converters. So you'll find generally in most cases, most of your oils will be around 800 parts per million of zinc. And the reason for this is, is most motor companies or manufacturers of engines do not want a lot of zinc in the oil because it does cause catalytic, catalytic converter failure. So uh, again, that's something to be aware of, and that's why the uh, advent of the, uh, in addition of the uh, titanium is coming around to try to replace the full use of zinc. So it does help keep wear metals and uh, moving parts separated, and that's a good thing. Magnesium. Now magnesium has a totally different use, and it is a detergent. Yes, a detergent additive to help clean your engine. And of course, it provides an alkalinity to help neutralize those acids. Acidic oil is your worst enemy. So in order to do your 
your runs, you want to make sure that when you change the oil, you change it on time to avoid the acidic nature. Now, acidic oil can affect seals, gaskets, and everything else. So you always want your alkalinity to be higher than your acidic. And that's what this additive does, is try to keep the alkaline nature at, and the acids at bay. Calcium is also another detergent additive. And it provides some uh, alkalinity and helps neutralize those acids also. And of course, it is used very much by a lot of ma manufacturers of engine oils to help reduce the acid type of the oil. So it is used quite a bit, and you'll find it in uh, virtually all my oil samples. Barium. Now, barium is a detergent additive also. I don't find a lot of barium involved in many of my oils that I tested, but it is there and it is also used to neutralize the acidic qualities of the oil. Now, as we all know, we don't want the acidic oil, so again, this is another additive that helps neutralize the acidic oil. Silicon. Now, silicon comes in a lot of different flavors, but uh, it can be in there as far as your uh, contaminants. Now, contaminants uh, are silicon, and it could be from your engine being manufactured, or maybe you had work done where they use silicon sealant. You will find silicon in there. And also, another source of silicon is engine coolant. Yes, well, you know, antifreeze, uh, which could be in there. So, uh, one thing that they do use silicon in there is uh, uh, high levels of it could result in a lot of foaming of your engine oil. And that's why you want to make sure that uh, you do change that oil to get rid of it shortly after you do any work so that you don't get a lot of foaming if you get silicone in the oil. And then once you do that, you'll dilute it, and of course it won't be doing that for you. But again, silicone will be in there, and that's usually coming from any type of gasket sealing uh, chemicals you used in your engine during the manufacture or repair. Sodium is another contaminant. It is associated with boron and potassium, uh, and of course, uh, it confirms glycol contamination. What is glycol? Glycol is coolant, and thus, if you find these two in there, potassium married up with boron, you will then have a coolant leak, and you have coolant in your oil, and of course, your lab test will tell you, hey, you got a problem. Better check it out. Potassium is also, again, a separate uh, additive, and generally if you have high potassium, you have coolant in your oil, and that's a bad thing. And then, of course, they'll verify that with the presence of any sodium, and then you will go from there, and they will notify you that you have coolant in your oil. Now, viscosity. They do a viscosity test. It's called the SUS, and it'll usually be about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, basically, what an SUS test is, is Sable Universal Seconds. Now, what they do is they take 60 cubic centimeters of a fluid, and they flow it through an orifice uh, of standard uh, SUS uh, visometer and at a given temperature. And then, of course, they time how long it takes. And that, in turn, gives you your viscosity. I'm not going to dive into the highly technical aspects of this, but just so you know, it comes right down to at 210 degrees, how long did it take the 60 centi cubic centimeters of the oil to flow through this, this meter and under pressure. So that's really what it comes down to. And uh, for us laymen, that's good enough. But we do know the viscosity at this point when we do the testing. Viscosity testing for the covert centistroke, CST test, of course, is a measure of internal resistance to the fluid of the force causing the fluid to flow. Now, they use this for a lot of under, other industries, cosmetics, medical, and, of course, cooking and everything. But in this case, they use the kinematic viscosity test for engine oil. Fuel in the oil. Now, that is another part of the properties, and the percentage of the fuel in the oil is directly related to the decreasing flash point of your oil. So, you may start out with the virgin samples, as you see in my oil test, 
but it will decrease as you use it. So you can expect your flash point to be lower as a used oil sample. Now what happens is the fuel gets down into the oil and the more fuel you have in the oil, the lower the flash point. So what happens is heavy idle, city driving, or you have a bad injector that's leaking fuel that could get down into the engine oil and cause you problems. So if you see this, then you might want to take action as to what the cause may be. Antifreeze is another property that is, of course, addressed here, and that will be directly related to your coolant. Now, if you do see anything that is, of course, coolant related, you'll want to go and check what's going on. Broken or cracked blocks, failed gaskets, seals along with water pump failures are some of the common reasons you will have coolant in your oil and it will require immediate action because this will destroy your engine. Water, they will measure what water you have in your oil because condensation does occur and pure water can enter your engine block just from setting or any other causes that may occur. Uh, again, coolant is associated with water also so you want to make sure that you address this issue if you do have any high water levels in your engine oil. Insolubles. Insolubles, of course, contribute to the degradation of the lubricant. And, of course, they can increase your operating temperature and energy demand of your engine and, of course, utilize more fuel. Uh, leaking seals, top feeling... Uh, inadequate breathers, PCV valves, all these things can contribute to insolubles. In other words, you're getting something like dirt, essentially, or carbon or something that is getting into your oil, and you want to address this. Maybe you're running your engine without an air filter. That would be a prime cause, or maybe the air filter is broke or not working right. Another reason. But either way, insolubles are something you don't want to see in your engine because that indicates wear and wear is bad for your engine. Other properties, and this one is really one of the base numbers and it's called a total base number or TBN. Uh, TBN measures the lubricant's alkaline reserve or ability to neutralize acid. Again, a higher number in your TBN will of course give you a better reading. So if you have something that's getting down lower, that means your oil is becoming more acidic. This is a good test to determine how much life you had left in your oil when you changed it. And it might make you say, hey, maybe I can go another couple thousand miles on this oil and then run another test later and then decide, do I need to change the oil or can I go another thousand miles? This test greatly assists you in determining the lifespan of your oil. Your total acid number, TAN, this of course is another great test that will help you and denotes the amount of acid present and of course makes the lubricant uh, chemically neutral. Now this is the more accurate testing that you may want to do to help determine the life cycle of your oil and is a great test to have performed, although it does cost extra. It is a great test to see where your oil stands and how much more life you would have left over. Now this is MAC-T and this is of course the end of this presentation here and I hope that you uh, learn from what I just covered as far as your oil report. I covered all the wear metals, the additives, and the properties that are involved in your uh, oil test. This will help you make good decisions in the future and I will follow on now as I go with the oil testing results for all the virgin samples on 5W20 synthetic oil along with gear loops. And ultimately at the end of this series I will make another video stating which oils I believe are good, my top three, and which gear lubes I think are my top gear lubes for you to utilize in your vehicle. This is Mac T Ford Edge, and again, join Mac T Ford Edge on Face Group, and also this YouTube channel. Like and subscribe, and if you want to get a hold of me at YouTube, go to join Mac T Ford Edge because I do not have comments on my YouTube channel. And as with all things, 
my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day too. And with that being said, the Band of One's going to play some great music and Mercy Grill's going to toss a couple one-liners at you. Thank you for watching Matt T's videos. Remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Grill production.